Eye tracking and AI upsampling are going to revolutionise VR gaming. Here's why. Let's start with eye tracking. It's pretty self-explanatory. With the use of some sensors in the headset, it's possible to track the movement of your eyes so they know exactly which part of the screen you're focusing on. This will help with presence in social applications like VR chat because your avatar's eyes will be moving naturally and other users will be able to see exactly what you're looking at. The main benefit of this for gaming though is with foveated rendering. Foveated rendering has already been used in some games, but it's fixed foveated rendering. This is when the centre of the screen is full resolution and towards the edges it bleeds out to a lower resolution. This is more common with the original Oculus Quest and it is noticeable when you're looking for it, but it does help reduce the load on the GPU as it isn't having to render the full resolution across the entire screen. With eye tracking it's possible to have the foveated rendering move with your eyes. With the use of some software, they can pinpoint exactly which part of the screen you're focusing on with high accuracy and have the screen at full resolution at this point then bleed out the resolution for the rest of the screen. We've already seen a few companies demonstrate this tech. Toby make eye tracking products and have their eye tracking built into the HTC 5 Pro Eye. From benchmark tests, they've seen a reduction of GPU shading of over 50%. Pico Neo Eye is a headset aimed at business users with built-in Toby eye tracking. They claim that dynamic foveated rendering increases frame rates by up to 66%. The other thing that I want to talk about is AI upscaling. We've already seen this being pushed by Nvidia with the new RTX graphics cards. DLSS, which stands for Deep Learning Super Sampling, is a process that takes a lower resolution image and upsamples it to a much higher resolution using artificial intelligence. Not only does this look as good as the native resolution, but in some cases it can look better and you can get a large boost in frame rates. The reason it can improve image quality is because it replaces temporal anti-aliasing, which can cause some blur, especially in virtual reality. This technology has been exclusive to non-VR games until recently, when the new version added VR support. And we've had our first game, which you can play for free, which is War Thunder. Unfortunately, the DLSS implementation for War Thunder is quite poor, with it making the game look blurry whether playing it in VR or on a normal monitor. Hopefully, the developers can patch it and improve it, or we can get another VR game with DLSS working properly so that we can see how it performs. One of the big problems with DLSS is that it's tied to Nvidia's new graphics cards. If you have an AMD card or an older GTX Nvidia card, it isn't supported. It's also not easy for developers to integrate it into their games at the moment. There is a rumour that the new version of DLSS will support any game that uses temporal anti-aliasing, although the developers will still need to do something on their end to activate it on a driver level. NVIDIAs aren't the only ones working on this technology though. Back in 2018, Microsoft revealed DirectML. This is their version of DLSS and they showcased an image from Forza Horizon 3 upscaled in real time from 1080p to 4K. You can really see how much sharper the image looks when zoomed in. DirectML was introduced with DirectX 12 as well as DXR, which is Microsoft's software-driven ray tracing. We're only just seeing their ray tracing being used in the next-gen consoles, and the new AMD graphics cards will support it on PC, but DirectML seems to have flown under the radar, with DLSS stealing all the limelight. I expect we'll see what Microsoft continue to work on and improve their upscaling with DirectML, and it will become used with the new generation consoles. It's also possible it will become more widespread in use on PC as it works on any hardware and is built into DirectX so it isn't tied to the GPU drivers. Back in 2018 at Oculus Connect, Michael Abrash, who was the chief scientist for Oculus, made a presentation about eye tracking and deep learning. He said that with a combination of foveated rendering and using deep learning to upsample the image in your peripheral vision, it has the potential to require an order of magnitude fewer pixels to be rendered in comparison to a full image. The white square in this presentation is the part of the screen the user is focusing on, and the rest of the image is low resolution. Here he shows an example of how they use deep learning to upsample the peripheral image. Here is how the image would look at full resolution, and now the upscaled version. You can see it isn't perfect, but because it is in your peripheral vision, you're not going to notice it. The technology has already improved dramatically in the past two years. So I think it's going to be possible to actually upscale the entire image, both in the peripheral and in your main vision. He predicted this would be part of their consumer headsets in four years, so that would be by 2022. 
Ultimately, these technologies are still in their infancy. It's going to take a few years for them to become available at mainstream level across all VR games. It will require Oculus, Valve and Sony to integrate eye tracking technology into the headsets, but when that happens we're going to see games with much higher fidelity with graphics that are comparable to the current gen non-VR games and they'll have excellent performance. It will improve all systems from the Quest, PC and console VR and will make VR gaming more appealing to more people. With the combination of these two technologies we will see a massive improvement to VR games visually and I personally can't wait to see how much this evolves with time. And that's the end of the video. If you made it this far then I do appreciate you. If you haven't already subscribed then please consider it. It does help the channel massively as it helps me build reputation and companies and developers take me more seriously. It'll help give me access to more games and hardware so that I can make more content that you hopefully want to watch. The channel is still young at under 18 months since I started at the time where this video was uploaded and I'm still learning. If you've got any feedback, whether it's good or bad, it's always welcome. I'm also looking at creating a Discord for the channel because I want to get to know my subscribers a bit more and also chat about VR games. I've got a lot planned for the channel so keep an eye out for new videos and I hope everyone has a good 2021.